We're off to a great start to this episode of Coffee Wednesday because there was a garbage truck outside literally two minutes ago. Anyhow, welcome back. And on this episode of Coffee Wednesday, let's talk about the concept of learning again. So in this episode, I want to give you guys a new conception of learning, a new perspective on learning, a new conception beyond just a dry textbook learning or the learning that you tend to do at university. So this is my third day back to university. Although today I don't have any classes. This is why I'm sitting here near my window talking about talking about learning instead of actually doing the learning. There is this kind of like social conditioning that conditioned us into thinking about learning in a specific way, that conditioned us into thinking about uh, learning as this really dry and boring process of downloading knowledge or data into your brain, which to me, that's not what learning is at all. So in this episode, I want to use this concept of design to convince you that learning is actually something a lot deeper than you think. Uh, it's actually something that is super fascinating and super fun. And in case you want to access this curiosity inside of you to really expand your knowledge graph or in a sense to pursue knowledge from different fields of disciplines. Well, here's your master key to that world of learning and the world of pleasure or the pleasure that you gain from learning. First key idea, how do we access this curiosity to learn? Well, the idea here is that you have to become aware that everything you see around you, you mean a lamp, your bed, or this window right here, or this curtain right here, or in, in fact, this video right here, how I'm presenting myself to the camera, the way that I'm speaking, everything's by design. You know, it's not just in fashion, it's, it's not just in graphics design, or it's not just in any design that you see on television, but everything around you is by design. You know, it's either, you know, human made, or it's either artificial, or it could be, you know, designed by nature. A film is essentially a series of images and a series of, you know, should I say moving pictures that's supposed to elicit certain emotions within you. Those characters and those actors and those people on screen, they acted in that specific way to conjure up certain emotions. And that is, you know, purely by design. Walk into a department store, the clothing lines or the department clothing stores, they arrange the shelves in a certain way by design to, well, urge you to buy shit from them that you probably don't actually need. The slippers that you wear, the shoes you wear, the shape of your desk, and certain paintings, you know, writing in a sense. Literature is all about designing senses and designing expressions in a way that's supposed to communicate some truths to you or communicate some uh, profound philosophical insights to you. And if you start looking at the world in this specific way, and if you view everything as a product of design, as a product of, should I say, you know, there are gears behind these mere surfaces and there are sort of like hidden truths behind these appearances. Learning becomes a process of looking beyond the surface, looking beyond the facade to look into, should I say, the inner gears in the inner workings of this beautiful piece of, should I say, beautiful piece of dress or beautiful piece of fashion, beautiful piece of book, beautiful piece of literature and a beautiful piece of film. There are gears behind this veil and there are gears behind this entire appearance. And a job of that appearance, this is what I personally think, uh, is basically a bait for you to buy into the fact that there is something deeper going on behind the scene. There is something deeper than just the appear mere appearance of literature. There's something deeper than just the first viewing of a film. And there's something deeper than just seeing a beautifully put together dinner dress uh, in a window. And if you start thinking about the process of learning as a process of, should I say, looking beyond a veil, as this process of slowly progressing through appearances and finally finding yourself in the process of slowly understanding the gears or slowly understanding um, what constituted this appearance. And then that's a really good way to go about learning because your motivation and your curiosity is organic because you are allured by, should I say, the aesthetics. You are allured by the mere surface of the thing. You are allured by a piece of film and you really want to find out more about it. And that kicks off this process of authentic learning. That kicks off this process of letting your curiosity guide you. And this process of learning is not merely just the process of, should I say, memorizing facts, but this entire learning is a very holistic view into the subject. It's a very sort of like integrated view because at the end of the day, you can look at the same film again, but your experience of that film, of that book, of that piece of fashion, of that piece of art will never ever be the same again after you've learned about this piece. A recent example for me was fashion because fashion for me had always been like a surface game because fashion is pure surfaces. So the mere surface of fashion sort of allured me to look deeper into this field, to look deeper into, you know, what the hell is happening behind the scene of fashion? You know, who are these puppeteers that are controlling 
how people should look or who are these puppeteers that are ha setting up these beauty standards. So I looked a little deeper into it and if you know anything about fashion, one of the first things that you will learn is that all of the fashion lines of, you know, in fashion history, they're basically, they basically belong to one of two categories. Category number one is prêt de porter, which is ready to wear. And category number two is haute couture, which is high fashion, made to order. And I found myself researching into haute couture, which is a really old art form of couturing and, you know, getting the clients into the fitting room and measuring everything, and, you know, with little pins and a mannequin. And throughout that process, I discovered that most of these members in the atelier, they they're actually wearing lab coats, so and I didn't understand why they were wearing lab coats. And that basically dropped me into the rabbit hole of learning about, you know, all the fashion history and all of these nitty-gritty details about, you know, why are these assistants wearing um, lab coats and why are these people upholding this tradition? The reason why people wear lab coats back in the days, I don't know if they do it anymore nowadays, is because haute couture was regarded with the same precision as basically science. So these people, they were, they were not just designing dresses, they were not just designing, should I say, uh, things on a set, but they were actually, you know, very precise tailors and scientists and seamstresses, and they are basically there to assist the grand couturier in his atelier. That's a piece of fact that actually blew me away because when you walk out into the streets, you don't think of fashion um, along the lines of doing science or you don't look at a dress and think, man, you know, this is a, a product of history. This, you know, ready to wear line wasn't a thing. Um, you know, should I say, if we wind back the clock. And that basically gave me a deeper appreciation of fashion in a sense because uh, people wear clothes and it is their way of expressing themselves and it is pure appearances and pure surfaces, but if we stay at the surface, there are all of these lessons that you're gonna miss out on. For example, this lesson that I've learned um, is really rich history of haute couture. So those are just my two cents and my, some, some rambles on fashion. And I want you to start viewing learning in this way instead of the textbook way. So find something, find a surface, find an appearance that really allures you, and then use that little appearance or let that little uh, seduction process happen and then lose yourself in a process of getting really curious about, you know, why is that the case? Why is this the case? And then you're gonna find yourself down a rabbit hole, like 20, 20 big Wikipedia pages. And at the end of the day, you're gonna have some pretty amazing insights. And these insights, you don't have to memorize them. They will stay with you forever because this is actually authentic learning. This is not something that you'll forget. Thank you for watching another episode of Coffee Wednesday. This is my coffee, I need to finish it before I head out of the door, and I will see you next Wednesday. Thank you for watching.